Most retirees pay eight to 12 times the taxes in retirement than they saved on their 401ks. In this episode, I'm going to answer the question, do you pay tax on 401k withdrawals after retirement? Yes, you do, but here's some insights that you probably have never learned about or considered before. So I've been a financial strategist and retirement planning specialist for more than 46 years. It's very common that people come to me and as they approach retirement, they go, Hey, wait a minute. You mean I'm going to have to pay tax on this money I take out of my 401k when I retire or these IRAs? I go, yeah. Uh, where were you when uh, they told you, no, you get to put in pre-tax dollars, it's tax deferred, but you're going to have to pay tax on it when you take it out. And they go, well, I don't know. I was just sort of following the herd. Uh, I started working for this company and this company and they offered a 401k and they said it was tax advantaged. I didn't realize I would have to pay the tax or if they did know, guess what they were told? Oh, you'll be in a lower bracket when you retire. So it's better to defer, defer, defer. Well, folks, in this episode, I'm going to explain to you most retirees who have saved any type of a respectable retirement nest egg are not in lower tax brackets when they retire. The last 20, 30 years, the only people that are in lower tax brackets were those that didn't save very much. Is that why you want to be in a lower bracket? Because you don't have very much money? See the old premise, oh, you'll be in a lower bracket has not been true or axiomatic for more than 25 years. People are in as high or higher tax brackets when they retire as they were ever in during their working years, even if they have less income. How come? Well, I'm going to explain. It's because they were going down the highway, so to speak, trying to achieve a destination of financial independence. And they had one foot on the gas pedal but the other foot on the brake pedal. Now, you know, maybe you know somebody who drives like that, but I wouldn't recommend it. So what do I mean by that? When I say one foot on the gas pedal and the other foot on the brake pedal, I mean, a lot of Americans are putting the foot on the gas by putting pre-tax dollars or tax deductible contributions into IRAs or pre-tax dollars into 401ks. They're getting a tax break on the seed money, the contribution money. And when I say seed, I use the metaphor of a farmer because if you were a farmer and you had the choice of buying your seed in the springtime that you were going to plant and you didn't have to pay tax on the price of the seed and you planted it, you cultivated it, you irrigated it, you worked hard. And later on in the fall, when you harvest, now you agree to pay tax. See, that's a traditional IRA or 401k. You get a tax break on the seed money, the contribution money. It is growing tax deferred, but then when you go to harvest your money, you have to pay tax. People had the other foot on the brake pedal during the entire time period, sort of killing or getting rid of the tax deductions, the only deductions they've had. What are some of those deductions you lose? Well, if you pay off your house, which most people want to do, you don't have those deductions anymore on your tax return. The children are grown up and gone, or if <laughs> they're not gone, you can't deduct them anymore on your tax return as dependents, even if they are living at home with you. You're not contributing money in retirement on IRAs or 401ks, unless you're still earning some money and you think you want to keep putting it there, which I would not recommend, but some people do that. But most people do not contribute to IRAs and 401ks after retirement because they don't qualify to do so. And so you don't have those deductions. If you're a business owner and you sold your business, you don't have any of those deductions anymore. Congress keeps raising taxes. They keep getting more and more greedy, irresponsible government spending, the printing of money, the general accountability office, the congressional budget office basically says taxes will likely have to go to 50, 60, and even 70%, not just for the wealthy. This is for even middle income Americans to fund initiatives like Medicare for all or free college or student loan forgiveness. And so the writings on the wall, uh, taxes will likely be higher. Whenever I ask audiences, how many of you think future taxes are going to be lower? Nobody raises their hands. 
How many think they're going to be the same? Very few. But when I ask, how many of you think future taxes will likely be higher? A sea of hands goes up in the ballrooms at these hotels. And that's when I go, well, then why are you continuing to postpone, defer, procrastinate paying the tax to some future perceived unknown advantage? And then withdraw your money down the road when you're all convinced taxes will be higher? That doesn't make sense. Why not pay tax on the seed money and enjoy the harvest later on tax-free? Now, sometimes people think I'm talking about a Roth. Well, a Roth is a step in the right direction, but there's still too many strings attached. You can only put in a certain dollar amount, a certain percent of your income, but you can't touch it before age 59 and a half or for five years. I don't like any of those. And so in many of my episodes, I explain why I have never owned an IRA or 401k. I never will. And I've never owned a Roth IRA or 401k. I never will. Why would I? when my favorite vehicle is referred to by savvy CPAs and tax attorneys as the rich man's Roth. Now, I snicker because you don't have to be rich to have my favorite vehicle, which I call the laser fund. The laser fund is a max funded tax advantaged index universal life insurance contract that has the least amount of insurance the IRS will let you get away with and you put in the most money and I earn 11 and net 10. I earn eight, I net seven. I earn some years 25 and net 24. It is the best tax-free vehicle that I have ever seen where every million dollars can generate eighty dollars to $100,000 a year of tax-free income based upon actual history. And so it knocks the socks off of money in an IRA or 401k invested in the market where most people have their money. And the financial services industry says, oh, you should only take out 4% a year because you're only going to average 3.5% based upon research and study done by people in retirement who have their money in the market. And so this can give you 8% payouts instead of 4%. 100% more income, a million dollars can give you 80,000 a year of income instead of 40,000. But the 80,000 is tax free. The 40,000 coming out of an IRA or 401k is still taxed. In a 25% bracket, you're going to pay 10,000 in tax. They're going to charge you another 1% on that million in fees. After taxes and fees, you're not netting 40,000, you're netting about 20,000. So how much better is 80,000 than 20,000? Four times, it's 400% more. And so when people begin to realize this, they understand that, golly, what was I thinking because you will be taxed on your 401k withdrawals. There's, there's no way around it. So for years, I've helped people liberate themselves from the tax trap, solve their IRA 401k dilemma. And so there's strategies, we call them strategic rollouts. It's not a rollover. See, a rollover would be taking money out of a 401k and rolling it over to an IRA and continuing to delay the inevitable and compound the problem. And the government is a permanent partner with you. They will get a third or more forever of what that earns. No, a strategic rollout is where you get your money out, maybe over a five year period and you get the taxes over and done with sooner than later. But here's the key. You reposition the after-tax money into something that's going to be tax-free from now on. And so what's the difference? So this is why I've written 11 books thus far, and I'll write a book every year. The rest of my life is my goal. My 11th book, a national bestseller right now is called The Laser Fund. It's a 300 page book. It's actually two books in one. This one is about 200 pages that comprises 12, actually 14 chapters of charts and graphs and explanations of my favorite vehicle, which I call the laser fund. Laser is an acronym that stands for liquid asset safely earning returns. This is how to diversify and create the foundation for a tax free retirement. Now, if you like to learn by stories and examples, you flip the book over and you read this. If you're more right brain, this has 12 chapters with uh, 62 actual client stories in here. And on this side of the book, there's a chapter that talks about actual examples of strategic rollouts. In here, you'll read about two school teachers, a husband and wife, where I saved them a quarter of a million dollars of unnecessary tax on their IRAs and 401ks by doing a strategic rollout. 
There's another story in there of a gentleman who lost his uh, wife at age 70, and he was told to keep stringing out his, his IRA or 401ks, taking RMDs, required minimum distributions. You'll learn why. That's the worst advice I've ever heard. He came in and I showed him how he could dramatically increase his rate of return net about 50,000 a year of tax-free income instead of the measly 16,000 a year of after-tax income out of his IRAs or 401ks invested in the market. I saved him $750,000 at the end of the day in unnecessary tax over where his advisor wanted him to keep his money. He uh, also was able to uh, take his real estate and optimize that in conjunction to offset any of the taxes that he might incur because I'm a tax strategist. There's another story in there of a couple. They are both physicians and I saved them 1.2 million of unnecessary tax. I couldn't save them all the tax, but it was amazing when they had 4.6 million in yet to be taxed IRAs or 401ks, their accountant and their advisor said, well, you'll have to pay 2.6 million in tax by doing RMDs, but you can afford that. I said, well, why don't you <laughs> ask their opinion if they can avoid it? And they said, well, yeah, if we don't have to, well, I couldn't save them 2.6 million, but I saved them 1.2 million of unnecessary tax. And they took that money and put it in what I call their family bank to educate their kids and grandkids into perpetuity with scholarships providing over $100,000 a year for as long as they lived and into the second and third generation with money that was otherwise going to go down the drain in unnecessary tax. There's another story in there of a couple in California. We took them from the highest tax bracket to a 0% tax bracket in five years. That couple now has $8 million tax-free, generating $800,000 a year of tax-free earnings and growth. They don't even need that much. They only take about $300,000 tax-free. The rest just sits there and grows. They would have never achieved that had they held on to their IRAs and 401ks. So if you want to read about these, I want you to claim your free copy. I will pay for the book. You just contribute $5.95 towards the shipping and handling. I will fire out a free copy of this book to you. You can read, study, and learn whether you're left brain or right brain and become empowered on how you can eliminate unnecessary tax on your IRAs and 401ks.